Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. A while ago, our friends at WattCycle sent us a 300 amp hour battery. And if you remember when I reviewed that battery, I showed you the part in the manual where it said the low voltage cutoff was down at nine volts. I found that interesting. I tested it. It was in fact down at nine volts where it said it was. I know it's not much of a shock. That was able to get that battery greater than 300 amp hours during my test. A little while after that, Will Prowse, who is another fantastic YouTube sensation, tested the same battery, but he actually tore it apart, opened it up, and found out that it had 280 amp hour cells inside instead of 300 amp hour cells inside. Will pulled 305 amp hours out of his battery, even though it had 280 amp hour cells in it. So yes, it did test at 300 amps down to nine volts, but the cells were only rated at 280. So what happened as a result of that fallout? Did WattCycle just abandon all of their customers and haha, sucker, screw you, you bought the battery and we found out later it wasn't right. No, actually what WattCycle did was very good. They gave all of the people that bought the batteries a $50 rebate to get it back down to the price of what a 280 amp hour battery would have been at the time. They let everybody know. They told me, and I told all of you through a comment or a community post or something like that back at the time that it happened. So truthfully, I think that that's actually a really good thing for a company to do. We found out there was a problem. We made the customer whole. I have zero complaints about that. What they did today is they sent me in a 280 amp hour battery. And I thought at first it was just the exact same battery with new stickers on it. This battery is what you call a smart battery. So it has a Bluetooth monitor in it. So you can turn off charging or you can turn off discharging, which I actually find pretty helpful. If there's a situation where it's like I'm, I'm out camping and it's bedtime and I just need to turn everything off, why would I leave the battery run all night long? Yes, there, there are reasons, like maybe my refrigerator needs to be powered to sleep. No power is lost overnight. I don't wake up to a dead battery. I still have internet the next morning, go into the Bluetooth. Turn it back on, Starlink wakes up, finds satellites, internet's back in business. Starlink's pretty power hungry. And on a 100 amp hour battery, I couldn't get a straight 24 hours out of that battery. Why would I wanna turn off charging? I don't know, but it's a feature. Maybe sometime in the future, I will figure out a good reason as to why I wanna do that, but I can. Whereas before I'd have to like throw a manual on off switch or I'd have to unscrew the positive terminal on the battery or something along those lines, turn off my charge controller, which may or may not have Bluetooth in it to allow me to do that. And besides all that, it's actually just cool nerdy technology to geek out on. Let's take this battery and put it through its paces and see what we get on the other end of this. First thing you gotta do whenever you receive a new battery is you need to fully charge it. They don't ship fully charged. There's probably some law somewhere because you know how we like to make laws about every single thing on the planet. Then we're gonna start the discharge cycle and anything that's exciting during the discharge cycle, I'll share with y'all. Because, you know, it's a, it could happen. It could happen. Let's get moving. Oh, real quick, I have a discount code in the description of the video down below for you. So if you were looking to get a battery from them, they have all different sizes of batteries. I've done a couple of different videos for you guys so far. Check out the discount code, get yourself the battery you need, save yourself some money. Let's get testing. We've got the big battery up on the test stand here, and this thing is actually larger than the test stand. So typically a 100 amp hour battery is either a group 24 or a group 31 size, and those are standard sizes. Group 31 is what you find in your car, group 24 is what you find in your boat. This is bigger than both of those two. We'll get you some measurements a little bit later on in the video, but it's just bigger than this space and it's leaning against the inverter here. But what I have is my load device, which is currently plugged into nothing. And I have my battery, which we're going to plug into that. Let's get that hooked up. All right, I use Anderson power poles for everything. They are interchangeable, they are easy to use, and they just plug in and I know exactly what I am working on. So it makes it really quick for me to do these tests and swap everything out. Let's take a look here at the load device. We're pulling 13.2 volts out of the battery, which of course is higher than its 12 volt rating. And what I wanna do is I wanna pull out 10 amps. So I'm gonna turn this top knob, which is our course adjustment knob. You'll see the fan start spinning. And I'm gonna turn until I get to nine something. Here we go, 972. And then I'll turn the lower knob, which is our fine adjustment. We'll get this dialed in right to 10 amps. All right, so we've got 13 volts at 10 amps, a little tiny bit of sag, not much, that's good. And what you'll see down here is some numbers. And this last one here is the one that we're gonna look at. It says 000 0.06 amp hours has been pulled out of the battery. While I have been sitting here adjusting the knobs and after everything settles, it starts to produce a little bit better. So I gotta just come every so often and just tweak the adjustment. It doesn't technically matter other than 
my own personal OCD because math is math. It's going to take 12.9 and multiply that by 10 amps and we're going to see just how much power we can get out of this 280 amp hour battery. So simple math, 280 amp hours in the battery and we're pulling 10 amps out of it. 28 hours. I'll be back in 28 hours to give you a report on how much power this battery has produced. This here is the point where most batteries give up. You can see I'm at 102.68 amp hours. So we still have another 180 amps to go in draining this battery. Let's get you all some measurements. At its widest point, we're looking at 15 inches from handle to handle, but you could cut those handles off if you were getting creative. We're looking at seven and a half deep. Have some camera blowout. Uh, 10 and a half to the top of the post, but it is nine and three quarters to the top of the battery. Y'all don't need to see me on the scale. You can take my word for it. This thing clocked in at 58 pounds. So bring your muscles. We have just breezed past the 280 amp hour mark. We're at 283.8. We're still pulling 12.3, which is fantastic. It's been 28 hours, 17 minutes and 10 seconds. So we'll come back when this is done. You'll be able to see the, the time difference how much more time we have at 12 volts. This thing should really go down to 10 and then shut off. All right, another super quick update. We are at 10.5 volts on the meter here and 10.5 volts is getting down pretty low. Usually these things have a 10 volt cutoff, but we're at 10.5, we're pulling 10 amps out, 30 hours, 304 amp hours, 10.5 volts, more to come. All right, so we are at the point where we're gonna have some problems here. You can see that she is struggling between 9.75 and zero. I think we just hit zero. 305.73 amp hours, 30 hours, 28 minutes. We pulled 3,892.78 watt hours out of this battery and we're officially dead. So I caught it right at the point where it was shutting off. We're gonna take this one step farther. I'm gonna unplug this from here. This is the solar charge controller and it is wired in to this cable here to the power distribution system. I'm gonna take the battery and I'm gonna plug it in to one of these, which is gonna give me power from the solar panels to recharge it. And then we're gonna take a look at the solar charger and see what it says. So there is the battery unplugged and we're gonna plug it into the 25 amp port, which is right there. And now we see 11.6 is what the charge controller is seeing on the battery. And the charge controller is gonna to start to figure some magic out. 10.3, EO1 means that there's a dead battery attached. And that's what this alert light over here is for. Very soon, I think it's still trying. So I'm gonna cycle through here and see what else we have. The load is zero, which it should be. The battery is putting zero amps to the load, which is true because there's no load. The solar panel has put eight watt hours into the battery to the load, which this is probably part of that load. The solar panels themselves are seeing almost 27 volts, 28 volts, depending on the clouds. The battery is at 11.4 volts, 24%. We're putting 21 amps into this battery right now. And when we come back in a little bit, that warning alert should be gone, but this battery is now being recharged. That's fantastic. Okay, so what did we do? We took the battery that was rated at 280 amp hours and we got over 300 amp hours out of it. We took it well beyond its limits and it survived. It got down to 9.75 and started getting flaky, but at 9.75, you're going to have trouble powering 12 volt devices anyway. So the BMS inside the battery shut off. I would have liked it to have shut off hard, but it still shut off to protect the cells inside from being unable to be recovered. And then I plugged it into the battery charger and she started recovering right away, which is pretty awesome. So now all we have to do is 20 amps in times Number of days of sunlight, number of hours of sunlight in the day is how long it's gonna take this thing to recharge. In a normal circumstance, you wouldn't run it that low. 280 amp hours at, like I said, a 10 amps per hour draw, which you're not gonna do a solid 10 amps per hour draw, is gonna last you 28 hours straight. That's, that's simple table math. Where it gets to be interesting is whatever it is that you do, you cycle. Like if you're, if you're running a refrigerator on this, it cycles on, pulls 10 amps for 20, 30 minutes until it's cool. And then it cycles off for three hours because it's a nice insulated cooler box. It's doing its job. And then it cycles back on again. So for a 12 volt refrigerator pulling 10 amps when it needs to cool, this thing's only going to last you a whole week or so. But then who goes a whole week without having sunlight and solar panels or without having a little bit of mechanical empathy and wanting to recharge the battery? So far, this thing is doing great and it has exceeded my expectations. Out of a 280 amp hour battery, I'd have been happy with 278 to 285, 283, 282, 
anywhere you know, within a you know, two amp hour difference margin of error in either direction, I would have been perfectly fine with. This thing delivered 20 more amp hours, I'm happy. What do you guys think? Leave me a comment down below. Is this horrible for this battery? Is this amazing for this battery? Okay, here is where the fun comes in. This big old battery behind me, that one, has a Bluetooth app to play with. And I love playing with stuff. It's called WattCycle. It's in the App Store. I'm gonna click install. It's in the Play Store. It's probably in the App Store too, but this is the Android version. And I'm gonna open it. This is what I always say. This little screen right here is what's happening. It's going to ask me for location permission. It needs location permission from the operating system. So the operating system can tell what region you're in so that the operating system can abide by the artificial rules on paper about Bluetooth working in only specific regions, even though it's right there over my shoulder to my phone, which are clearly in the same region, regardless of what region code is in the device. Anyway, it's just a thing. So we hit agree. And then it wants the privacy policy, which somewhere along the line is gonna ask me to do something with it. Okay, I hit back, there it is. And you need precise. It has something to do with GPS being only a 30 foot type signal, so 31 feet, which might be outside of the approximate GPS location data, isn't good enough. So we'll do precise, allow, and then WattCycle needs to connect to and determine the relative position of nearby devices. Yes, I want you to connect to the battery that is relatively right over my shoulder. Sometimes people put rules on paper that shouldn't exist in the first place. And we're gonna find a whole bunch of Bluetooth stuffs because I have a whole bunch of Bluetooth stuff. This B497 is a battery that is on the tongue of the trailer, and this 1F22 is probably this battery, so I need to check check, there is a silver label on the side of the battery that says what it is. All right, 1F22. Why am I not seeing the other Bluetooth battery on the tongue? Who knows? Maybe I can rescan and it will show up the second time. 497, 8, 9, 857. There it is. So there's the three watt cycle batteries that are within 30 foot radius of me. So 1F22 is the one in question. We're going to click on that one. Would I like to connect to the thing that I just clicked on to connect to? Yes, I would. Connected. Okay. And this battery is currently charging. You can see that it's going up, 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 up. So it is doing the charging thing. 12.6 volts, 14.7 amps, 15 amps. So I can edit the name and change that. And that is all that this app can do. 4% of 280 amp hours, 4% of 310 amp hours tested is a lot of power still. Okay. That is the WattCycle app, but I think it was the BMS Meta app. That was for the other two batteries that we did a different video on on the other channel. So local connectivity over Bluetooth, 857, 497, and the other one is still connected to the other software, so I have to actually exit the other software, and there it is, 1F22, let's click on that. And this is only two apps, and I'm sure there's another 20 or 30 amp apps. This one takes a second for it to realize that it's not discharging, that it is charging. Yeah, this one's not getting complete information. I didn't expect this one to work, but you know me, I'm gonna try weird things. Okay, so I need to exit this app, and then we'll go back into the Watt Cycle app. And there's the 1F22 battery, and let's connect back to it. I don't think there's a whole lot you can do in this app other than just kind of see the status. So I can actually turn off the charging. It says it's 84.7 degrees Fahrenheit, which is probably pretty true. It's been, this battery's been working pretty hard and we're shoving some power in it right now. And that's about all that you can do. I click the warning link. It shows nothing, so I guess there is no warning. All right, let's switch camera views and get the solar charge controller and the app in the same screen at the same time. Let's see what happens. We have 12.6 volts here and we have 13 volts there. I can, I can believe that there's a little bit of discrepancy between the wiring and fuses and connections and so forth. Let's look at amperage. 94%, 14.5 amps, 15.1 amps. I can believe that too. Whenever you have two different meters at the same time, you're never gonna get them to agree. 15.1, 15.7, 15.4. It's, it's changing faster than I can read it. But that has to do with the sunlight that we have going on today. 14.2, 15.1. So it's saying 1300 watts have gone in and this is saying 200 watts right now. So this is total power that has gone into the battery since it's been charged. And this is current wattage going in right now. Fun stuff. I love nerding out on battery stuff. All right, nerd time is over. The battery passed the test. I kind of knew it would because this is not my first rodeo with WattCycle. I've been pretty impressed with their stuff so far. And I've been pretty impressed with their customer service like I mentioned in the beginning of the video. What would you do with a 280 amp hour battery? In my last video, I kind of suggested that at 300 amp hours, 
that would be all field day weekend for you. And I'm pretty sure it will be. I think the Milwaukee Packout cases with the wheels on the back and the dolly handle on it would be a fantastic battery box. They're also really strong, so they'd be able to handle the weight of this battery. But inside of a battery box like that, what kind of connections would you want? What kind of features would you want? What kind of things would you want in there? Definitely you want USB and USB-C to charge all of your devices while you're out there. I can see a need for a solar charge controller. So, I mean, you've got extra space and you've got the carrying capacity above the battery toolbox you still have some room till you get to the carry handle so there might be some a good place to put some solar panels up there but what other kind of connections I'm, I, well I almost went without saying I almost forgot to say it the Anderson power poles to power your radio gear and then the ability to take all of the extra power cables and so on and roll them back up and put them back inside of that massive toolbox for you would you want an inverter if you're doing uh, solar ham radio stuff what would you need a 120 volt AC inverter inside of a case like this for. The cool thing about the Milwaukee Packout stuff is you can make it modular and you can get a box that is just the inverter to snap onto the top of the box that is just the battery. So you can also do all kinds of really cool crazy stuff with that. Leave me some feedback down below what you think would be a good set of things to add to a big battery like this to make yourself the ultimate portable go box for battery power. Don't forget the link in the description down below with the discount code to save you some money on this thing. And while you are scrolling down to get to that, hit that subscribe button along the way. This year I am on a mission to get 100,000 subscribers and you can help. Just click that button, we're all set. After all that is said and done, I got a video right here for you to watch next. Thanks for being awesome, I'll see you over there.